what's up everybody welcome back to exotic astrology again and today we will continue with the first chapter of the bhagavad gita we discussed the first 30 verses and now we shall discuss the 31st 32nd 33rd 34th and the 35th verses so we'll discuss all of these verses they're a bit short not very big most of them are combined so let's start and before i begin as i say god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him <laughs> so what did we discuss till now in the bhagavad gita we saw that arjuna has told lord krishna that please take my chariot in between the both the parties the kurus and the pandavas both the sides were assembled for war and now arjuna has undergone a paralysis we discussed the four symptoms of weakness what are they i shall repeat in the 29th verse arjuna said my whole body is trembling that's the first symptom your body trembles <laughs> it's shaking my hair is standing on end as in hindi they say na wrong te khade ho gaye my bow gandiva is slipping from my hand which means we fear to take responsibilities and my skin is burning these are four symptoms of weakness so now we will go with the 31st verse and before i begin the invocation i would offer my prayers to the great sages and to my preceptors who have bestowed the divine wisdom unto me by reciting the prayer do you remember it no <laughs> no problem i shall help you remember ओम ज्ञान तिरंधस ज्ञानंजनाशलाकया चक्षुरुन्मील तस्म श्री गुरव नम एंड यस इफ यू आर न्यू टू द चैनल एंड यू हैव नॉट येट सब्सक्राइब्ड देन प्लीज सब्सक्राइब टू इट एंड इफ यू वांट अ पर्सनल कंसल्टेशन फ्रॉम मी देन प्लीज अप्रोच मी इन माय वेबसाइट बिलो वेदिक रिनाइसेंस ऑल राइट सो हियर गोज दी थर्टी फर्स्ट वर्स न च श्रेय नुष्यामी हाथवा स्वजनम अभवे न कांक्षे वजी कृष्णा न च राज्यम सुखा च द ट्रांसलेशन इज आई डू नॉट सी हाउ एनी गुड कैन कम फ्रॉम किलिंग माय ओन किंग्स मैन सो अर्जुन आई स्टेलिंग दिस टू लॉर्ड कृष्णा आई डू नॉट सी हाउ एनी गुड कैन कम फ्रॉम किलिंग माय ओन किंग्स मैन in the battle nor can i my dear krishna desire any subsequent victory kingdom or happiness so arjuna is telling how can killing my own people be good and how uh, how can i even desire victory by killing my own people right or kingdom or happiness he says three things victory kingdom and happiness therefore the purport is as follows without knowing that one's self interest is in vishnu or krishna the conditioned souls are attracted by bodily relations father mother brother husband wife hoping to be happy in such situations see the conditioned soul has a lot of hope in this material world even if a boy and a girl undergoes a breakup or a separation then they always tell each other no problem you'll find somebody else somebody better than your ex is waiting right that means they are very much hopeful that this world will give them happiness that's what is been told here in such a blind conception of life they forget even the causes of material happiness in such a blind conception of life they forget even the causes of material happiness arjuna appears to have even forgotten the moral codes of a chatriya why because he supposed to fight he is not supposed to think of all these emotional things now but he has forgotten the moral codes of a chatriya the word chatriya comes from the word chatatrayate chata means heart pain displeasure and trayate means one who delivers you from that so chatriya is one who frees you from pain that is why chatriya is referred to the kings 
so the king's duty is to free everybody from difficulties so arjuna appears to have forgotten the moral codes of a kshatriya it is said that two kinds of men namely the kshatriya who dies directly in front of the battlefield under krishna's personal orders and the person in the renounced order of life who is absolutely devoted to the spiritual culture are eligible to enter into the sun glow which is so powerful and dazzling i will repeat this statement it is said that two kinds of men namely the kshatriya who dies directly in front of the battlefield under krishna's personal orders not dies under krishna's personal orders and the person in the renounced order of life who is absolutely devoted to spiritual culture means these are the sadhus the rishis the celibates are eligible to enter into the sun globe which is so powerful and dazzling that means you can enter surya loka if you get uh, if you face death like a warrior in battlefield that's what lord krishna is telling here arjuna is reluctant even to kill his enemies let alone his relatives he thinks that by killing his kinsmen there would be no happiness in his life and therefore he is not willing to fight he thinks i will lose all happiness what's the use of killing all these people just as a person who does not feel hunger is not inclined to cook <laughs> beautiful the purport is so if you are not feeling hungry why should you cook at all right he has now decided to go into the forest and live a secluded life in frustration my god but as a kshatriya he requires a kingdom for his subsistence because the kshatriyas cannot engage themselves in any other occupation which means that as a kshatriya he is born to rule and perform administration if he does not do that he will not be happy so for him to go to the forest and stay secluded is not recommended he should do his duties perfectly but arjuna has no kingdom why he doesn't have because duryodhana has accepted by devious means he did not give back indraprastha as he was supposed to give when the gambling match had taken place arjuna's sole opportunity for gaining a kingdom lies in fighting with his cousins and brothers and reclaiming the kingdom inherited from his father which he does not like to do so arjuna is reluctant to get back his lost kingdom from duryodhana because he feels oh my god they are my cousins how can i kill them <laughs> he is getting very much emotional here therefore he considers himself fit to go to the forest to live a secluded life of frustration so now arjuna is telling i would prefer going and living in the forest and be a object of frustration rather than killing all these people and sitting in the throne so he is preferring to not do anything instead of doing things like killing so now we will go in the 32nd to 35th verse all these verses are in one go itself all the four verses kim no rajena govinda kim bhoger jivite nava ye sam arthe kankshitam no rajyam bhoga sukhani cha taimi vasishthe yuddhe pranamas tyaktva dhanani cha dhanani cha आचार्य पिता पुत्र तथा च पिताम ही इज टेकिंग नेम ऑफ ऑल दीज ग्रेट पर्सनैलिटीज मतुल स्वर पौत्र सियाल संबदनीच्छा ज्ञा हि मधुसूदना अभी त्रैलोक्य राजयस्य हेतो किम नो महीते महीते निहत्य धरात्राष्ट्र नित्र स्वजनादना विल रीड दि ट्रांसलेशन नाउ ओ गोविंद वाय गोविंद बिकॉज इन बिगिनिंग हि सेड किम नो राजेण गोविंद एंड हू इज गोविंद गोविंद इज अनदर नेम ऑफ लॉर्ड कृष्ण हिमसेल्फ सो हिस्टेलिंग ओ गोविंद 
of what avail to us are a kingdom happiness or even life itself when all those for whom we may desire them are now arrayed on this battlefield so arjuna is telling we are desiring kingdom we are desiring this we are desiring that but if there is nobody to enjoy the kingdom with then what's the use of this kingdom that's what arjuna is telling see basically what is happening arjuna is giving different arguments why he should not fight this battle okay and later on we will see lord krishna will smash into dust into powder all the arguments oh madhusudana madhusudana is another name of krishna madhu was a demon it's a very su- sweet word right madhu <laughs> madhu means honey i guess madhu makhi is honey bee so madhu is a very sweet word many females in india have the name madhu but here this madhu was not very sweet <laughs> he was a demon actually and lord krishna as lord vishnu had killed this sudana that is why his name is madhu sudan so now arjuna is telling o oh, madhu sudana when teachers fathers sons grandfathers maternal uncles fathers in law grandsons brother in law and other relatives are ready to give up their lives and properties and are standing before me why should i wish to kill them even though they might otherwise kill me so my god see this arjuna is telling even if they want to kill me why should i kill them he's taking name of all these people see acharya pitra putras tathaiva cha pitama he's telling all these relatives fathers maternal uncles fathers in law grandsons brother in law so many people are there and other relatives so why should i kill them even though they might otherwise kill me so arjuna is acknowledging the fact that if i don't kill them they will kill me <laughs> but he's becoming so helpless out of attachment he is telling that i prefer to be killed by them rather than killing them o maintainer of all living entities he is referring to lord krishna which word is this madhusudana trilokya rajasya dhatrashtra nap janardhana janardhana is maintainer of all living entities jana means living entities ardhana means one who is worshiped because the word aradhana comes from the word radha which is a reference to shrimati radha rani lord krishna's consort so janardhana means one who is worshiped by everybody or and one and why will you worship somebody if that person can maintain you right <laughs> therefore this is called maintainer of all living entities so he is telling oh janardhana oh maintainer of all living entities i am not prepared to fight with them even in exchange for the three worlds let alone this earth he is telling do hell with this earth even if i win i do not even want the three worlds even if i become the king of the heavens i am not interested what to speak of heavens even the lower planetary systems what pleasure will we derive from killing the sons of dhritarashtra see now he is trying to justify why he should not kill so now we will read the purport Arjuna has addressed Lord Krishna as Govinda because Krishna is the object of all pleasures for cows and the senses. Krishna is the object of all pleasures for the cows and the senses. Senses are the senses which we have: eyes, nose, all these senses. By using this significant word, which is Govinda, because the word a uh, go has two meanings. Go means the cows. and it also means the senses senses means those organs by which we perceive things in this world those are our senses now i am seeing you i am talking i am eating something i am smelling something those are my senses so he is telling lord krishna is the object of all pleasures for the cows and the senses because lord krishna was also known as gopal he used to ride with the cows so that is another name we will discuss on the word govinda later now by using this significant word which is govinda arjuna indicates that krishna should understand what will satisfy arjuna's senses so basically arjuna is meaning indirectly that you are known as govinda means you are the controller of all the senses so before me telling you only understand what i want to say that means he is referring to krishna's 
greatness as the controller of senses and he's telling i hope you exactly understand what i want to say here you understand what i mean all right arjuna indicates that krishna should understand what will satisfy arjuna senses means krishna will understand what arjuna is going through but govinda is not meant for satisfying our senses beautiful this is that means lord krishna is not to be used i am using the word use because it's written here he is not meant that means he is not meant to be used for satisfying our senses if we try to satisfy the senses of govinda however then automatically our own senses are satisfied because there's this shloka yashmin tushtam jagat tushtam when god is satisfied everybody is satisfied so the precarious state of the current modern society you see so many bad things so many nonsense things are happening in this world because people are not following the laws of god they are breaking all the traditions rules and those things which will give them highest fulfillment so that people are not doing and because of that they are trying to fulfill the urges of their senses they are going on indulging with the opposite sex recklessly and then they are going on drinking smoking and doing so many things which is not recommended by the scriptures and not only are they doing the wrong things they are also not doing the right things there are two things one is you break the principles and then you also don't do what you are supposed to do that is to perform spiritual activities that also people are not doing so that's the cause of misfortune here so now it's written but govinda is not meant for satisfying our senses our own senses if we try to satisfy the senses of govinda however then automatically our senses are satisfied if we try to please god we will become happy that's what is told here materially everyone wants to satisfy his senses and he wants god to be the order supplier i will repeat <laughs> these are some punch lines so we should repeat the punch lines materially everyone wants to satisfy his senses and he wants god to be the order supplier of such satisfaction that is why in india especially in maharashtra some of my friends i know they will go to lord ganesh lord ganesh is the son of lord shiva and mother parvati so they will go to lord ganesh and they will pray they will not pray actually they will flatter him try to flatter or uh, many maharashtrians i have seen not only in maharashtra but this uh, this song which they sing is more famous in maharashtra especially in places like mumbai during ganesh chaturthi which is celebrated for lord ganesh and his appearance i guess so they say devare deva ganapati deva <laughs> means oh god of the gods ganpati which is ganesh devo mein tumse badkar kaun which means among all the gods who is higher than you all right and then they say aur tumhare bhakto mein humse badkar kaun and among your devotees and followers who is greater than myself <laughs> look at this obsession they try to flatter lord ganesh and then they try to use him and engage him in fulfilling their own existing materialistic desires they want a good wife they want a good home they want a good husband they want this they want that and they will flatter lord ganesh by saying devale deva ganpati deva devo mein tumse badkar kaun aur tumre bhakto mein humse badkar kaun so that's what is written here materially everyone wants to satisfy his senses and he wants god to be the order supplier of such satisfaction order supplier the lord will satisfy the senses of the living entities as much as they desire but not to that extent <laughs> that they may covet <laughs> but when one takes the opposite way namely when one tries to satisfy the senses of govinda without desiring to satisfy one's own senses then by the grace of govinda all desires of the living entity are satisfied that means if you try to satisfy god's desires then your senses will be automatically satisfied because when you order the water the root of the tree the whole tree is nourished 
Arjuna's deep affection for community and family members is exhibited here partly due to his natural compassion for them. He was a very compassionate person. That is why he was feeling very bad for them. Also, he is therefore not prepared to fight. And because of this compassion, his natural compassion, he was not prepared to fight. So he was hesitating. Everyone wants to show his opulence to friends and relatives. But Arjuna fears that all his relatives and friends will be killed on the battlefield. And he will be unable to share his opulence after victory. So Arjuna's concern is if there is nobody living with whom will I share my things. This is a typical calculation of material life. Because people always want to show off to their family members how great they are. To their relatives, friends and especially to the opposite sex. How handsome or how beautiful they are. Yes. This is a typical conception of material life. That's what is been told here. The transcendental life, which is the spiritual life, however, is different. Since a devotee wants to satisfy the desires of the Lord, he can willingly, by the Lord, accept all kinds of opulences for the service of the Lord. And if the Lord is not willing, he should not accept a farthing. Which means it's told here that when somebody is a greatly elevated personality spiritually, he can even accept great opulences for using or engaging those opulences in service to God. But if God doesn't want that, he will not accept it. Any examples? Yes, Yudhishthir Maharaj is the perfect example. He was a Raja Rishi, which means he was a king, but he was also a Rishi. He was very renounced and very detached. He only wanted to offer service to his citizens in the name of God. He did not like to sit in the throne. <laughs> Unlike Duryodhana who only wanted to sit there in the throne and do nothing. And if Lord is not willing, he will not accept a farthing. That means he will not accept anything if God doesn't want him to accept. Arjuna did not want to kill his relatives and if they were if there were any need to kill them, he desired that Krishna kill them personally. So he is telling Krishna indirectly, Oh God, if you want to kill them, just kill them yourself. Don't tell me to kill. <laughs> At this point, he did not know that Krishna has... Listen to this. At this point, he did not know that Krishna had already killed them before they are coming into the battlefield. And that... He was only to become an instrument of Krishna. My God. Lord Krishna had already killed them before the start of the war itself. So he's just becoming like an instrument, like a doctor uses a knife to do some surgery. So Arjuna is the, like that knife and Krishna is like that surgeon. This fact is disclosed in the following chapters. As a natural devotee of the Lord, Arjuna did not like to retaliate against his miscreant cousins and brothers but it was the lord's plan that they should all be killed so basically what is been told here that arjuna was a great he was a greatly elevated personality he was a very great person and because of his greatness he did not want to kill all these people because they were his brothers cousins brothers and it doesn't happen in a war that only your enemies die People from both the sides will die. That's what Arjuna is having that fear of. Arjuna did not like to retaliate against his miscreant cousins and brothers. Who are his miscreant cousins? Duryodhan, Dushasan, Vikarn. But it was the Lord's plan that they all should be killed. So this was inevitable and Arjuna was not willing to accept the reality. The devotee of the Lord does not retaliate against the wrongdoer, but the Lord does not tolerate any mischief done to that devotee by the miscreants. See, Arjuna, although so many wrong things have happened with him, he is not having any malice in his heart. He is not having any poison against the miscreants, Duryodhana especially. But Krishna is not going to tolerate. So uh, never offend any great soul because Great souls will not take offense. They will not feel bad. 
but the problem is god will feel bad and when god feels bad he will show his wrath upon you and then you will be in trouble so that's what he is told here the devotee of the lord does not retaliate against the wrong doer but the lord does not tolerate any mischief done to the devotee by the miscreants the lord can excuse a person on his own account but he excuses no one who has done harm to his devotees therefore the lord was determined to kill all the miscreants although arjuna wanted to excuse them so basically at the end arjuna is telling i know they are bad they are not good but i don't want to kill them <laughs> but krishna is indirectly hinting him you may not want to kill them but they have insulted you and draupadi and kunti and so many other personalities that is why i will rip them apart <laughs> so krishna is indirectly going to hint now that mr arjuna give up your cowardly cowardliness none of your tricks and techniques and arguments and tools are going to work i am going to smash all your arguments into dust and into pieces and i will kill them i will rip their heads apart because they have insulted people like you <laughs> so arjuna is very forgiving but krishna is merciless when it comes to protecting his devotees because in the later part of the gita lord krishna will also say yoga kshemam vahami ham that means i preserve what my devotees have and i carry what they lack <laughs> there you go arjuna's arguments and his lamentation why not to kill and his fears okay until next time if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it and if you want a consultation then approach me in my website below vedic renaissance and if you like this video click the thumbs up and share it with whoever is interested to know about the divine science of the gita all right until next time with another video from the gita bye bye see you